Uh, good evening. And we would like to thank all of you guys for joining our tonight's Zoom discussion as part of our Community Expo virtual sessions. Again, if you are just joining us, um, if you could please check in by typing your last name and your property uh, into the chat, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, so we will be hearing from our community partners about, tonight, about tonight's topic, education tips and tricks, and how their resources could be beneficial to your family, and especially during this time. Uh, so let us first welcome all of our partners volunteering their time tonight. So please welcome uh, from the Navy Region Southwest School Liaison Program, we have Kelly Frisch. Thank you, Kelly, for joining us tonight. Uh, from the Grand Canyon University, we have Sarah Ar Aram. And from the San Diego River Park Foundation, we have Jenna Frey. And from the San Diego Public Library, we have Ton Vono and Carrie Chris Landry. And from the Military Child Education Coalition, we have uh, Dr. Becky Porter. So obviously in 2020, lots of things have changed and we've gone into the school year. I'm sure there are lots of questions and thoughts and opinions on what is going on and how uh, it's being handled. So our goal here tonight is to try to give you practical and pragmatic advice and resources for all of you, our military families. Uh, so we will be monitoring all questions through the chat. So at any time during the session, uh, please send your question along with which vendor the question is for in the chat, and we will be sure to get it answered at the end of the discussion. Uh, so just a reminder, we will wrap up the evening with some of those great prizes that I mentioned earlier. All right, so let us first get started. So we have five topics that we are going to be covering in uh, tonight. Uh, that our panel will be discussing. So the first topic is any tips for creating daily routines or structures in the home, especially for families with multi-age students, and how are schools dealing with virtual classes and what other virtual resources are there? So first, we will actually start with Kelly on this topic. Kelly, if you can start us off. Yes, good evening, everyone. So uh, as you mentioned, my name is Kelly Frisch. I'm the Regional School Liaison Officer with Navy Region Southwest. And I want to start off by saying, I know as everyone's mentioning, it, it's not an easy time right now. 2020 has been full of challenges and we are all trying to kind of figure out this new system and new normal, especially around education. So I know many parents out there are now homeschool teachers essentially and assisting their children in virtual classrooms and I know it is not an easy time so we are here to help and here to provide as many resources as we can. So I'm going to address um, the virtual resources. We do have on our Navy Life at Home website a list of all websites that the regional school liaisons across our enterprise have put together to assist families in kind of helping navigate what those virtual resources are and what they look like. A few uh, important things to remember, all of our current school-based programming needs and resources around helping military families are still going on in the virtual setting. So I know right now some schools are hybrid, some are still not open, some are still trying to figure it out. But with the school-based programming, we have our military family life counselors, our MFLEX, who are still providing virtual services to support our school sites. We help promote our military child education and our tutor.com resources to our school sites as well. Tutor.com right now, I know, has expanded their usage to civilians um, as well as active duty until June of 2021, which is extremely helpful for our families who are needing that extra support in helping their children kind of get acclimated to this virtual world as well. Um, I think it's important to note to really speak and get involved with your child's school, albeit virtual or not. Just so you know, I know we mentioned schedules and getting to know the climate and when the school is doing synchronous learning, when they're doing asynchronous learning, so that you can kind of understand that culture and that climate of the school 
And if it's different than if you have multiple children, making sure that, you know, these schedules kind of sync up and, you know, you're prepared to kind of assist uh, with these multiple schedules as well. Um, and again, you know, we have uh, nine installation school liaison officers within Navy Region Southwest, four specifically here in the Metro San Diego area, two at Naval Base, one at Point Loma, and one in Coronado as well. So please utilize um, our services and reach out to your school liaison with any questions. And we really encourage you all to, you know, work with us and work with your school site so that all of your children are are ready to go and not falling behind and doing what we can to, to keep them motivated. Awesome, great. Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to Carrie uh, with the Public Library. Um, I know who has some insight on this topic. Carrie? So I'm Carrie Kreitz Landry. I'm the children's librarian at the Sarah Mesa Library, and we're part of the San Diego Public Library system. And since everything that's happened with COVID, we do have um, still a lot of online resources. Even though you're not able to come into the library, we still have things that are going digitally that you're able to do. So Mike um, put up our resource guide. So one thing that we just kicked back up is our do your homework at the library program where if you contact uh, the email that's there, the D-Y-H-A-L, so do your homework at the library at San Diego.gov, you can use um, our free homework assistance program for your kids and we have um, volunteers and coaches that work with students K through eight to um, help them with their homework assignments. We have a distance learning center on our website that we just opened up that has a lot of vetted resources for distance learning, for homeschooling. There are curated sites that um, you'll know are good resources for things to do, for um, resources for working with your kids during this distance learning time. And then all of this stuff is free, but if you do want to get a library card to get access to our digital um, collections, we do have ebooks um, and e resources that you can use, which are all digital. You can get a temporary library card number. All you need to do is fill out a quick application on our website, and that'll gain you access to our databases, our ebook collections. And then also, if you want to do curbside, which is a service we're offering right now, you can turn that library card that's a temporary digital library card into a physical library library card and Tom's going to talk more a little bit later about our curbside pickup um, and then one other thing that we do also have is our virtual hub which is a Facebook group that we have up and running that we are using to do daily virtual programs that include story times crafts um, book talks and more so that's all ages we have story times for the kids we have crafts for the adults we have book clubs going still that you can become part of so there's a lot of ways that you can still just interact even with the library not having our doors open to the public perfect thank you so much we appreciate that carrie um all right so uh jen i know you had some information on this as well jen hi everybody i'm jen with the san diego river park foundation if you haven't heard of us before, we're a nonprofit dedicated to the health of the San Diego River. So our goal is to have a series of recreation and parkways all the way up and down the San Diego River from where it runs up in the mountains near Julian, if you're familiar with that area, all the way down through near Dog Beach and Ocean Beach. And uh, so we do restoration work, we do plantings, cleanups, and that kind of thing. Obviously, like everybody else, everything's kind of on temporary hold. Um, but we've had a lot of fun kind of taking a lot of our stuff and making it virtual. So we do have a whole virtual page on our website. Uh, you can go to San Diego river.org and right in the bottom screen, there's a couple of different links. One of them is to our virtual uh, learning website that you can go to. And there we have a bunch of different activities. Um, we're all, we're, we already have updated some of our lessons and activities, and then we'll just continue to add on more. One of my favorites is we're going to have a three-part series on bats, because we have a ton of bats in San Diego, and you can find them all over the river, and they're really cool. And so we'll have videos with some of our scientists featuring those guys. Uh, we also have links to our YouTube channel, so that's where you'll be able to see some of these activities, see our scientists out in the field, see what we do on an everyday basis, um, and then some of the things that you can join in on hopefully when we start um, doing things in person, but just a lot of things you can do for right now. And we also have virtual story time on there too. 
Uh, some of the activities that we have, you can do them along the San Diego River. You can do them at home. There's things like iNaturalist, which is an app where kids can go identify like bugs and plants and uh, all these different net natural things, even if it's in your house. It, it could be indoors, outdoors, wherever you have access to um, like pollution control or patrol that you can do around your neighborhood, scavenger hunts and those kinds of things too. And then upcoming things that we'll have as the school year kind of kicks off is we'll be doing virtual field trips. So uh, those will be open to school groups or larger groups and we'll actually have the scientists out in the field uh, that kids will be able to interact with and ask questions. And a lot of that's focused on river bugs, which is really cool. You get to see these teeny tiny things, um, nice and large. A lot of people don't even know all those things are in a drop of water. Uh, and then we'll also be doing some Facebook lives too that will take place uh, with different scientists and different specialists around San Diego and even the country. So we have a lot of different opportunities and or if you just uh, go onto our website or email us, we'll help you find what you're looking for too. That sounds like a lot of opportunities. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is great. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. So also, um, Dr. Porter, I know you wanted to start, share some things on this as well. Yeah, thank, thank you. As a reminder to folks, I'm from the Military Child Education Coalition. So um, the things that I'm going to talk about aren't maybe as exciting as bugs. But, um, <laughs> but as far as um, trying to get routines in place for your, for your students, especially if they're studying from home right now, um, I would recommend, and what we recommend on our website, is that uh, parents set up a place in your, um, in your house, in your apartment, someplace where um, that your child can be dedicated to their learning environment. Um, even, if, e even if it's just a corner of your dining room, uh, someplace where when they sit down there, they know that they're there to study. Um, and also having like a regular routine for them. So they're not um, rolling out of the bed in pajamas and eating cereal um, when the teacher is starting to call them to attention. Well, I don't know if they call them to attention, but get their attention. Uh, so just things like that, where, where you get your child into a normal routine. Um, obviously, if you have more than one child, they, their schedules are going to be a little bit different. Headsets might be helpful for them. Um, our granddaughter went to um, a center that her school had set up in um, Central California, and um, my husband said that all the little kids on their headsets in there, because they were all different ages, it looked like a, a tiny call center where all the little kids were in there on their headsets. But if you have, if you have more than one child in your home uh, who's doing virtual learning or online learning, that might be helpful. Um, with regard to the backpack, actually, um, you know what, you could use that to keep your child's um, school supplies all together. So you, if you don't have like a little box or a little shelf where they can keep their things, um, their backpack can be a great place to do that. Um, I would also say that um, if you go online to, um, to our website at militarychild.org, um, we have a lot of um, different resources on there that have been curated. Um, the ones that are specific to COVID are under uh, the banner called Navigating Change. And uh, so it's militarychild.org and then look for Navigating Change. We also have a toolkit on there that we developed uh, in concert with Columbia University and their Center for Public Research and Leadership. And that has all kinds of tips on just what's happening in the current environment, but then also um, uh, tools that parents can use to help their child in the current environment. So that's all I have for right now. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Parr. That was a lot of information. We really appreciate that for sure. Um, okay, so that wraps up for topic one. So thank you all of our speakers for covering that one. So our next topic uh, covers a couple questions as well. Uh, topic two is uh, how can we integrate physical exercise in activities outside of the home for families? and any suggestions on places or activities they can participate in around San Diego or resources uh, to expand for uh, supplement learning and ways also to avoid screen time fatigue. So for this one, we are going to uh, go ahead and start with Tan. Tan? Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Tan from the Tierra Santa Library. I'm the children's librarian. I'm also part of the San Diego Public Library System. 
and then to do with uh, screen time fatigue. I know that a lot of the parents, kids, really, very tired of looking at the screen all day, reading ebooks. Uh, our San Diego Public Library system, we started offering curbside pickup. It's contactless pickup service. We started May 20, on May 26. So it's available at 24 of our 36 locations, including Terra Santa and Sarah Mesa. So it's pretty easy. If you go to our website, sanigolibrary.org, log in with your library card number and search for a title, place it on hold. And once it's available, you receive an email notification to go to that pickup location. And our pickup service is from 10.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. And then you just go to that library in the designated waiting area or in the parking lot. And it's called the uh, library branch. And they'll ask for your library card number. And then they'll pull that hold for you, check it out. And then once they tell you, um, you just wait in your car, they'll tell you to come outside, come to the designated uh, pickup table that's in front of the entrance. And it's a great way to still engage your kids with reading books, picture books, juvenile uh, fiction, any books you, know, you want. If it's not available at that pickup location, you can request it from our other branches system wide. Awesome, Tom, and, thank you very yeah. much. Um, any, any more on that topic or, or were you finished? I'm sorry. Yes, um, that's, that's all I have for us. Uh, okay, great. Awesome, perfect. Um, thank you. Um, and so I also, I know that Jennifer, going back to Jen, uh, I know you had some more uh, things on this topic as well. Yeah, so there's a lot of great places that you can go outdoors along the San Diego River too. Uh, one of my favorites, and also it's closer to where I live, is the River Mouth down near Dog Beach and Ocean Beach. Uh, there are several miles that you can bike and hike and walk, what kind of skateboard, whatever you're interested in doing. So that would be Starting around, you could start at Dog Beach. It goes all the way to I-5. And it's also the trails on both sides of the river. It's a nice paved, um, beautiful place. And coming up, coming into the fall, we're going to be having a lot of birds come through there. It's already a major bird highway, but now is really the best time of year to go out there. And you can just see a ton of different types of birds as well. Ospreys hunting. Um, it's a really great place. So that's one of the, the fan favorites for sure as we go further up the river. There's also an area, if you're familiar with Fashion Valley Mall, just east of Fashion Valley Mall is an area we call Fish Drip for short, but it's one of the first kind of San Diego River improvement areas. And that's also a paved trail, great views of the river along there, nice shaded areas too, some uh, picnic benches and tables that you can stop at for a little snack or a break. Um, many people are familiar with Mission Trail, so that's another great place to explore along the San Diego River. And then as we go out east into like the Santee area, um, Mass Park is now open, it opened at the earlier this year. So that's got some beautiful areas to explore, see parts of the river, um, and have areas to picnic, get outside, get, get away from some of that screen time. And then as you continue out east as well, there's an area called Walker Preserve. So all those areas are some good um, family friendly areas that you can go check out along the river. And then with those things, you can go ahead and do some of those activities that we mentioned are on our website. So a lot of those are great to just take outdoors, uh, scavenger hunts, iNaturalist app. We even have some things like interview with a tree. You can go hang out with the tree and, you know, ask it its name and see how old it might be. Just get fun ways to use your imagination uh, away from the screen there too. And then if you follow us on our uh, social media pages, like we have Instagram, Facebook, you can go back in time, see some of the staff highlights of the areas that they really like to go. Uh, suggestions in the future, we'll have some videos of us going out there, what you need to bring. Uh, you don't need anything too crazy, you know, just a good pair of shoes and flip flops in some areas, just a water bottle. Um, so you don't need to be overwhelmed. It's not scary. It's really easy and accessible to get out there. You don't need fancy gear. And then, uh, what was, I had one more thing I wanted to say. Um, oh, and then coming up when, as it gets cooler out, we do have some preserves up in the headwaters of the San Diego River. So kind of out east near Julian, uh, hopefully we'll be able to start having people out there depending on how things are going. And so those are, it's another great place. Uh, just sign up, you can sign up for e-news or follow us on social media to kind of keep on top of what we're able to offer and all the cool places to go along the San Diego River.
Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, so a lot of fun stuff that, that uh, they have mentioned. So we really appreciate it. Thank you again. Um, okay, so we will go ahead and move on to the next topic. So topic three are what uh, resources or advice uh, do you have for students uh, with special needs, disabilities, or students uh, for whom English is a second language? And so Kelly, we'll go ahead and start with you on this one. Great, so we do have some Navy contractual uh, resources to help students with special needs. Um, the first one to include uh, Special Education Connection. This is a website and it hosts a series of webinars and trainings, not only for families, but for staff as well, to really understand kind of what that special education uh, needs are and or understanding questions with IEPs, how to empower the family and the parent to become their child's best advocate uh, while attending these 504 and IEP meetings as well. Um, it's definitely important to know the State Department of Education, so the California Department of Education, they have been hosting a series of webinars and instructional activities through their websites and through Facebook Live to really help understand what the way ahead and what the future plans are gonna be around special education as we try to navigate this, this new normal and as schools are attempting to reopen, of course, with the, with the guidelines of the CDC and all of that as well. Um, I did wanna say as well, you know, in, in looking at our virtual resources and how the Navy regional school liaisons put these together, I can't stress enough the importance of, you know, going to look at the MWR digital library, the, the resources for, you know, assistance on um, anything K-12 related with tutor.com or, or educating yourself to really understand, you know, what, what, what is going on at your specific school site with your child and how to get assistance that way. So I definitely encourage you to check out um, those websites along with the State Department of Education um, as well. And again, as I mentioned, you know, with um, English Learner Services as well, quite a few information um, assessments and FAQs are also on the State Department website um, to include, um, you know, determining students' needs um, in EL you know, virtually and working remotely um, and working uh, virtually and remotely with IEP meetings and 504 meetings and setting those up. Uh, we also partner in San Diego with, I mentioned the San Diego Regional Center, but there's an organization as well called TASC, Team of Advocates for Special Kids that we work with, helping families get their IEP and 504s reviewed um, to work um, and to understand, you know, going in prior to the meeting of getting your questions answered as well. Um, so definitely uh, reach out to your school liaisons and your EFMP, your Exceptional Family Member Program Liaisons, for assistance sort of navigating that school system. You know, one of the seven core services from the school liaison program is special needs system navigation, which is this, that, you know, we are there to help point you in the right direction, connect you to the right people and to get your questions answered and in a timely and efficient manner within your school district uh, and your um, in your area of where you live. So um, please, please work with your school liaison and your EFMP liaison. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Kelly. Um, and so now we will actually move to Dr. Porter, who also has some advice on this topic. Thank you. Um, I think um, during this time, it's important for everybody to remember, whether you're on the educator side of the house or the parent side of the house, that this is, this, uh, obviously, these are tough times. When you think about families who, for whom their students need an IEP or a 504 plan, um, you, I mean, it's challenging in the best of times. Uh, and then when you put on top of that, that you might be moving, a military family moving, it gets even more challenging and you have to do it more often. And now you do that in a COVID environment and it's really obviously a, a, tough, a tough situation for everyone concerned. Um, it's tough for the educators and it's tough for the parents. But I'll tell you, um, as parents, the best thing that you can do right now, I think, is to 
um, you're the one who's spending, the, as, you're, as you're very well aware, <laughs> you're the one who's spending a lot of time with your child, your student. And what you can do right now is to keep track of what's working with your child, what's not working, and communicate as frequently uh, and as clearly as you can with their school, both now and then um, when we eventually get to go back to school in person, um, have all that ready so that when you do get to have an IEP meeting, um, you, you have that information and you've been documenting things that are working for your child so that you can provide some some data actually that will help them in putting together a more formal IEP if they haven't been able to do so to that point. Um, I think that it's important for all of us to remember uh, during this time, well, it, it's real obvious during this time that, um, that a lot of the platforms that are being used uh, by, by schools um, in particular aren't really well suited to or aligned with the needs of either um, children with special education needs or um, those who, for whom English is a second language. And so um, it takes us, um, additional uh, vigilance on the parents' part um, to be communicating with the teachers and the administrators. So I think that's kind of, you would, I would say that is my overall um, piece of advice for uh, families who have special needs uh, during COVID-19 is to really um, pay attention to what's working at home and communicate that with your child's teachers. Great, thank you very much, Dr. Porter. Um, and last for this topic, actually Sarah from GCU. Sarah, we'd love to hear from you as well. Hi everybody, like Anthony just mentioned, I'm from Grand Canyon University. I'm the local military counselor out here. So I'll speak more on the college and university side of things. Um, Usually universities and colleges have um, offices set up. They're called, uh, at GCU, it's called the Office of Accommodation. And so I definitely recommend if you're going through this time um, and needing just a little bit more assistance for um, the special needs disabilities or uh, English as a second language, reach out to your point of contact at your university and see if you guys, um, if your university has an Office of Accommodation if you're unaware and you don't even know who to reach out to, um, reach out to me. I'm in network with a lot of military counselors um, throughout the country uh, for universities and colleges. And so if you need that point of contact, I'm happy, happy to kind of be that resource for you. But Office of Accommodation will be really, really helpful in navigating um, those different resources and just helping you through this time a little bit more. They've been in place before COVID. Um, so they're, they're, uh, they might have a little bit of a lag time getting back to you now that things have ramped up just a little bit more, um, but they have been in place before the pandemic even was a thing. And so I just recommend reaching out to them. They're there to help you. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. Appreciate it. Okay. So for our fourth topic, um, this is tips for students changing school districts and how can parents prepare and adapt to changing policies and curriculums? And what do we know about reopening plans and schedules? And again, we're gonna start with you, Kelly, on this one. Oops, I apologize, I was on mute, uh, mute here. Um, so as I was saying, you know, I, as I'm sure everyone is experiencing this and you know, hearing things, reading things that um, there's a lot going on again, and there's been many questions about reopening and when school will resume and what plans are going to look like. And really that the answers to these questions are that every day, the school liaisons, we are trying to navigate this ourselves as well. I know schools are trying to follow CDC guidelines and Schools are trying to foster the Stronger Together reopening plans that the state of California has put out. But really, things are changing rapidly. Um, we encourage families, like I mentioned, to please look at the Department of Education websites and your school's websites as well, and your school um, contacts, um, to get the most up-to-date information. What we do know in the last address and from the State Superintendent of Public Instruction in California is that it's up to each individual school district on how and when those plans and those schools will open. 
So there's not going to be a common opening for every school district. Some school districts have started. Um, again, you know, the states and counties have been given uh, their own plan to guidelines to follow. And as we have heard, some are going hybrid, some are going in person for shorter hours. So districts are looking at a variety of possibilities of when they do open. And if those that are currently open now looking at hybrid plans, block scheduling, smaller classes, rotating schedules. So nothing, again, is certain at this point. And I, I think that is part of, part of the challenge we're hearing from parents because, you know, the only um, constant right now is change. And, of course, things could potentially change if we're facing another, um, you know, round of, of cases going up and potential uh, shutdowns um, potentially happening. So it's really important to keep that communication open with your child's school, working with your school liaison to know the most up-to-date information. Um, again, nothing to certain. Um, state superintendents, like I mentioned, having their weekly webinars with special education and food and nutrition also do webinars to discuss, um, you know, potentially what could happen, the digital divide, special education, so on and so forth. But the key takeaway really is that no district is going to look the same no district is, is looking the same in general when they do reopen. So again, it's, um, you know, the, the sooner the better to talk with your children's school and school liaison so that, you know, you know what your specific school site is planning to do so you as a parent can plan as well. Great, awesome. Well, thank you very much, Kelly. Appreciate it for sure. sure. Um, okay, so actually on this topic also, Dr. Porter, I think you had some insight for this as well. Well, my main insight is to call Kelly um, or get in touch with Kelly because really your school liaison officers are going to be um, great resources for, for things like this because they're linked in with the, with the local school system and they can, uh, they can you know, show you where to go or tell you where to go on websites. Um, you could also look at the, um, the website for the Military Interstate Child Compact Commission, MIC3 is what it's called, and they're website is mic3.net. Um, and so that's, that's applicable if you're moving from one state to another. Um, and Jen Gibbons has it there in the, in the chat. Um, that's, that's applicable if you're active duty or on active duty orders and moving from one state to another. So if you're just coming to California from someplace else. Um, yeah, that was really what I was going to say is check the school's websites and call your school liaison officer. So um, everybody get Kelly's contact information. Dr. Porter, can I, if I may, when you mentioned the interstate compact, I did want to mention that. So thank you so much for bringing that up. And I have heard from some families that weren't sure if it was still applicable during COVID. And I want to make sure that families are aware that even yeah. if your school is virtual, that the interstate compact is still um, there for you and your children as you move from state to state, overseas, uh, Department of Defense Education activity. So please, if you aren't utilizing that or don't quite understand what that is, let us know and we can educate you because school liaisons work with our school districts to educate them on what that is so that we level the playing field and make your transitions easier as you move. So thank absolutely. you for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a situation where everybody wants to do the right thing if they know about it. And sometimes schools aren't familiar with the compact or um, what their state has obligated them to do. So, um, right. yep, happy to support in that regard. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, you two. Really appreciate it. Okay, well, actually, this takes us into our last topic. Um, so our topic number five is what recommend sorry, what recommendations or information do you have for those going in uh, into the college semester and those planning to use, utilize the GI Bill and has it been impacted at all by COVID-19? And this is mainly directed to Sarah. Sarah? Yes, thank you, Anthony. Okay, so my first recommendation is to still start. Start school. If you have been putting it on the back burner and you're like, this is my semester, I'm gonna start. Don't let COVID um, and the change and the adjustments that are happening at university level um, scare you. They are making adjustments and it is still possible to start class. Um, the 
biggest uh, advice that I would just have you reach out to your school about is that you might have to change your modality. So if you were planning to go onto campus and they're obviously uh, making a big shift towards e-learning or doing your classes online, then that would be something you want to get answers about. Uh, the biggest reason I bring that up is because some universities are still charging and requiring freshmen to pay the um, room and board fee even if it's um, going to be an online class. And so, oh, sorry, there's a jet. Um, and so if that is something that's happening at your university, then that is something you just want to get a little bit more information on because why would you be, be paying that amount of money if you're actually going to just be taking online courses? And then um, the second recommendation I give is complete your financial aid application. Um, always apply for financial aid if you're utilizing, or if you apply for it and you qualify for it, that doesn't mean you have to use it. It's just helpful to know what you qualify for. Um, things like Pell Grant are huge benefits, especially for our military members. So definitely apply if you are not looking forward to doing it. I will walk you through it. it only takes about 20, 25 minutes. It's a pretty simple application, but I know when you're thinking of a government application, you're not too stoked to complete it, but I can walk you through it. And then um, the final um, two items that I want to recommend is ask your school how they're certifying their classes. And so when you're utilizing the, uh, this is in uh, terms of the GI Bill, when you're utilizing the GI Bill, the university does something called certifying your classes. And so you just want to find out, are they certifying your online class as what it was previously? Maybe it was a seated course, because if that's the case, then you should be getting full BAH. The VA has been a little bit flexible. Um, with that, if they are certifying it as online, then you'll just be aware that that BAH will be a little bit lower. Um, the application process is still the exact same, um, but definitely reach out to the VA, um, but they'll most likely direct you to the school to find out how they're certifying um, those classes. So those are just like four-ish tips that I recommend, um, but you can always reach out, text me, give me a call. I'm here to answer all your questions. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. And, and really thank you to all the partners and to the speakers that we have had tonight. We really appreciate all of the advice and uh, all the resources that you have shared. Um, and so actually, uh, that was, like I said, the last topic. So we are going to allow our um, partners to give kind of like a one minute recap um, to kind of share any last thoughts or also information in case you want to get a hold of them. Um, so first, uh, we will start with uh, Kelly Frisch. Kelly, if you can unmute yourself. <laughs> Sorry, that's the second time tonight. <laughs> I, was right. I was reading the chat pod and trying to answer them as, as quickly as possible, but no um, I would encourage you, I know there were some questions about our, our website and what school liaison is assigned to what er specific area school site. So I provided the NavyLifeSouthwest.com slash slow, S-L-O, website for you to check out. Um, we do have an updated resource guide and our what we're calling the School Liaison Lookbook um, with different resources in there as well. And all of the resources that I mentioned with the virtual are on there as well. But the key takeaway in my, in my longer than one minute uh, recap is please work with your School Liaison Officer. If you have any TK through 12 questions on anything from deployment, PCS, um, partnerships in education, command communication, state guidelines, IEPs, 504s, anything in that realm, we are here to help. Great, thank you very much. And again, uh, from uh, GCU, uh, Sarah, any last remarks or contact information you'd like to share? Um, yes, okay, so my last remarks would be, remember Office of Accommodation when you're needing a little bit of assistance. Um, start college, don't put it off, don't procrastinate. Um, my contact info is right there. So what I would do is jot down my cell. If you guys have any questions, I'm so happy to be a resource because I know college can be super confusing and um, a little frustrating at times on figuring out what you need. Um, so I'm super happy just to be that resource for you. Um, and then final tip, apply for financial aid. You don't have to use it um, if you qualify, but it's just nice to know what you might qualify for and how to use it. And that's all. Great. Well, thank you very much.
And from the San Diego River Park Foundation, Jen. Hello. Uh, I think I thought I saw a couple people asking about the website and uh, we put together a bit of information that has a map that you can use to check out different places along the river and our virtual learning opportunities as well as some of the spots to go to. So all of that will be, I think, in the information that gets sent out afterwards. Um, but our emails are really easy. Mine is just Jen, J-E-N-N, at San Diego River.org. Uh, but if you go over to our website, we have a bunch of different contact information on there. Um, but yeah, really get outside, check out the San Diego River. I know I I really feel for you, and I know that it's really hard with everything going on beyond Harden. Um, but, you know, the studies even show, too, that just getting outside, getting your kids outside is really helpful um, to deal with everything going on. And so please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Some of the things that I, some of the places I mentioned were the River Mouth uh, down near Dog Beach and Mission Trails Regional Park, uh, also right by Fashion Valley Mall. And then the two places out Eastern County were Walker Preserve and Mass Park. And then we also have a really cool opportunity coming up. We're doing our first ever all like everybody, everything's virtual, first ever uh, 5K virtual trash trot. So you can do that around your neighborhood. You can just get out, walk, bike, run, or you can pick up trash along the way. Uh, you can register with us and get one of our, um, we'll have these little virtual sticker or not, the sticker will come in person. So you'll get mailed to it, it to your house and you can uh, sign up, follow it along online, post your pictures, and then we, you can either do it around your own neighborhood, or we also have three suggested routes on along the San Diego River, and some tips of how to make the most of it. So uh, that'll be October 2nd, 3rd, or 4th. You have any of those three days to take part in the virtual 5k, and that information is on our website as well. But just another fun, easy way, we've kind of done all the work for you. Uh, of how to get out there and then just contact us if we have any questions. But um, yeah, we'd love, we'd love to see you on the river in person in the future. And for right now, we'll just help send you out along there. So good luck everybody with the school year too. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jen. Appreciate it. And also we have from the San Diego public library, we have Ton and Carrie. Yes. Yeah, so um, just remember, even though that the library's doors are closed, we still have lots going on. We got 24 locations that are open right now for curbside pickup. That's Monday through Friday, 10:30 to 5:30. Um, if you go to our website, which is just sandiegolibrary.org, I dropped in the chat a little bit ago. I can drop it in the chat again. Um, we've got tons of online resources. We've got a um, distance learning center. We've got online homework help. You can get library cards. We've got our virtual hub through Facebook. So there's still a lot of resources going on through the library all of it free all of it good reliable resources that you guys can come and use just during this odd COVID time that we're in right now and we're gonna hopefully be back up and running soon great thank you very much and then also from the military child education coalition uh dr porter any last information yeah, thank you. So if you go to our website at militarychild.org, there is a lot of information there. The navigating change is specific to COVID-19. Um, you'll also find information about our upcoming education summit. We usually do a national training seminar every summer in the national capital region. Um, and frankly, the, the location and the travel make it difficult for some people to get there to get away. Um, this year, we had to move our event to the fall, so we're having it virtually um, November 17th and 18th, and the registration information will be coming online, but the really cool thing for everybody this year, two things. One is there's no registration fee, and two is that we're going to have a parent track this year. It's usually focused on uh, students, uh, like high school students, and also educators, but this year we're going to have a parent uh, track as well. So um, check that out on our website. Um, we've got lots of great information there. And if you're having trouble finding what you're looking for, um, there is a button that says Ask Aunt Peggy. And Ask Aunt Peggy is, um, actually there used to be an Aunt, an Aunt Peggy at MSEC. That's what we call our program is MSEC. There used to be an Aunt Peggy there, but now it's, um, some professionals who are um, experts at transitions, and um, they'll be happy to direct you to the right place or answer your questions if you um, email us there. Or you can email me at 
becky.porter at militarychild.org. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Porter. Um, and I also mentioned in the chat, we'll also be sending all of their contact information to all the residents after the Zoom session. So if you have any further questions, we can definitely get those answered for you guys. Um, I think Kelly was answering a lot of the questions in the chat, so thank you. Um, the one that I didn't see was, um, are, are SLOs specific to schools in proximity to military housing? Is there anyone that would be able to answer that? Yes, yeah, so I did, I'm so sorry, I thought I um, responded to that one, but yes, so school liaisons are assigned, um, so there's 42 school districts in San Diego County, and each school district has an assigned school liaison, whether it's a Navy and or Marine Corps school liaison. So we do have what we call the area of responsibility and each school liaison based out of their installation has a specific amount of schools to include charter schools as well. Cause I know that was a question um, on one of the chats here as well. Um, so all of the areas are broken down on our website, again, based out of, you know, specific to your installation, but then each school site has their own school liaison as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, that was it as far as questions I saw in the chat. Okay, well, so with that, we conclude tonight's Community Expo Zoom session on education tips and tricks. We have covered a lot, and hopefully you are all walking away with some helpful information and resources. So on behalf of everyone here at Lincoln Military Housing, thank you again for joining us tonight. Uh, stay safe and healthy, and we look forward to seeing you at our future events. Uh, just a reminder uh, to keep checking the registration website for updated event information and future event information. Uh, but we are here for you. Thank you very much, and everybody have a good night.